Hello my friend, welcome to my channel. It's so nice to have you join me, but before we start today's walk, I want to share with you a little good news. My YouTube channel has just been accepted into the YouTube Partner Program. That means I can start to earn from the ads that appear on it. This is because I have crossed 1,000 subscribers and total over 4,000 watch hours. For that purpose, I want to thank all of you for watching my videos and for subscribing to this channel. On today's video, we will cover Well Key in Georgetown, Penang. If you are new to my channel, I hope you will like what I share and will subscribe so that we can go discover food and places together. All my narrated walking tours are researched to provide you interesting information about the places we explore. Let me give you our starting point coordinates. Key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze and you'll be taken to the entrance of Swettenham Pier where we started walking. Whether you are a tourist or a resident of Penang, you can use my narrated walking tours as your virtual tour guide. Just start the video at the starting point and I will narrate the sights as you walk. Now, this place well key may appear to be an old part of Georgetown, but it's still new if compared to the history of Georgetown itself. As a matter of fact, when Georgetown was established in 1786, this place did not exist. To be where we are walking right now, you have to be on a boat. That's because this area was sea back then. Land reclamation is not something new in Penang. It's as old as this old part of Georgetown. Until 1883, this area was sea and mud flats. Then came the reclamation which created badly needed space for warehouses known locally as go-downs. Right in front of us is one of those go-downs. It was built after the land reclamation completed in 1889. This enabled a new waterfront road to be built here. The road was named in honour of Sir Frederick Weld, who was governor of the Strait Settlements from 1818 to 1887 and was the person instrumental in spearheading the land reclamation and port expansion. But why reclaim when the rest of Penang Island was still undeveloped at that time? Because this was where they needed the land and not anywhere else. Most of the commercial infrastructure was already established in Georgetown. What was needed was space for warehousing and a pier for larger ships to berth. Across the road from here is Bangunan Tuanku Putra, a government building completed in 1962. Before it was built, there was another building here called the Town Club which houses among others the office of the Penang Turf Club. Here we see the high-rise block of Bangunan Tuanku Putra. It replaces the government building that was destroyed during the Second World War. Only one wing of the government building remains today and it now houses the Penang Islamic Council. The ground floor of Bangunan Tuanku Putra houses the general post office. The town club building which I mentioned earlier is just one of several structures from early Georgetown that is no longer standing. Another was Victoria Pier which was across the road from the town club and behind the go-downs. On the right is a hotel, the Royal Chulan Penang. Part of the hotel occupies the three-storey building that was originally Boston and Company. Boston and Company is the first in the row of merchant buildings that line Welke, and thankfully they are all still standing today. The Welke that we see today is very different from the Welke when Boston and Company building was erected. Back then, this area was the hive of harbour activities. Ships of various sizes were docked at the Penang Harbour and those that could not berth at Swettenham Pier were received by Sampans and Tongkangs. Goods were brought in, carried to shore by the Tongkangs and then laden onto lines of awaiting bullock carts. Here's a better view of Boston and Company building. It's one of those merchant companies handling the transshipment of goods. And even as goods came in, raw products from the Malayan hinterland were being exported from Penang. These include gambia, pepper, copra, gum, tapioca, rubber, and most important of all, tin. This is station 1 of the Central Area Transit, the pioneer of government-free buses in Penang. Since then, the state government has also expanded on some free routes and introduced discount parts. If you are planning to take the bus in Penang, I suggest you check for the latest details at the nearest Rapid Penang kiosk found at major terminals and bus hubs. 
as details are updated the whole time, it's best I do not mention information that might quickly become obsolete. Hmm, sorry that the focusing is suddenly out. I think I have improperly set the focusing or I could have accidentally touched the screen and caused the focus to change. Ah good, the focusing is back to normal. Sometimes things like this happen without me realizing it because the screen of the DJI Pocket 2 is so tiny. These are the historical mercantile buildings that line Velke. Aside from the first one, boasted a company, the rest are owned by Germans. The presence of German merchants in Penang is something of a surprise, as we would have assumed that the British had the monopoly on trade in the Far East. But the Germans, before the Second World War, did control a sizable proportion of trade in the Penang Harbour, dealing with everything from import-export to shipping and even insurance. The area on my left, now about to undergo revitalization, was where a lot of harbour activities had taken place. If we were to go back in time by a hundred years, we would bear witness to a frenetic, even chaotic scene of coolies, bullock carts, and even a train line to transport tin ore for smelting and tin slabs for export. Many of the coolies were Hokkien migrants who came from Fujian province in southern China. Too poor to own houses on land, they built their dwellings on steels over the water. Their waterborne villages became known as clan jatins as they grouped themselves according to their surnames. Right in front of us now is the Church Street Pier. Built between 1897 and 1898, it is the only historic pier from the 19th century that is still standing in Georgetown today. On our right are buildings that have been restored or built anew to maintain the general appearance of the area. They include the import-export firm Peterson, Simons and Company and what used to be godowns belonging to local rice miller Hua Hin Leong. The plan was to turn these properties into a luxury hotel, but so far, work appears to progress at glacier pace. So far, the Patterson, Simons and Company building appears to have been restored, while the hotel building next to it constructed, but nothing further has materialized. If only the hotel becomes operational, guests would have rooms with balconies overlooking the Penang Harbour. At the moment, this stretch of Georgetown waterfront is a bit dead, with projects awaiting completion and also restoration that has yet started. I just hope that the authorities will do whatever is necessary to bring some vibrancy to this part of town. As you can see, even the Church Street Pier, which was restored some years ago, has closed down. There were some businesses operating there, but I think the pandemic has put it to rest. The road in front of us is China Street Court, and the building on the right is Wisma Custom, or originally the Federated Malay States Railway Station. This is a railway station without any railway lines and no trains. In the past, passengers on Penang Island purchased their train tickets here. Then they crossed the road to the FMS Railway Pier, where they boarded a ferry to take them to the railway station in Prai to take the train. All that changed in the 1960s when a new set of jetties was built for both vehicles and passengers. On the island side, the jetty was called Pangkalan Raja Tun Uda after the first post-independence governor of Penang. On the mainland side, the railway line was extended from Prai to Butterworth and the Butterworth railway station became the new rail terminus. In Butterworth, a jetty was also built for the ferry services and named Pangkalan Sultan Abdul Halim. The ferry services are operated by Rapid Ferry under Prasarana Malaysia Brohat, which also operates the Rapid Penang buses. But as you can see, the ferry terminus is very quiet at the moment. 
That's because, temporarily, the usual ferry services have been stopped for a 100 million ringgit makeover. In the interim, passengers are ferried between the Swetterham Pier Cruise Terminal and Pangkalan Sutan Abdul Halim using high-speed boats. All the old ferries were retired except for one, which is still used for carrying two-wheelers. I am now walking towards the Welki bus stop, and behind it, you can see the Welki bus terminal. All buses to and from here are signage jetty. So, if you see a bus anywhere on Penang Island with the signage jetty, you know it's heading towards the ferry terminal. Those are the rapid Penang buses at the Welki bus terminal. Behind the bus terminal is Pangkalan Raja Tuhuda, the ferry terminal. It's no coincidence that the two are next to each other. This provides smooth connectivity for passengers arriving by ferry to take the bus to anywhere on Penang Island. In front of us is a pedestrian bridge to nowhere. These are the remains of Penang Island's first pedestrian bridge. It was built in 1975 and was in use until February 2020 when a piling crane crashed into it bringing its life to an unceremonious end. That's the other end of the bridge. Fortunately, nobody was hurt in the accident. Now the two ends of the bridge have added themselves as Georgetown's newest historic ruins. As mentioned earlier, the ferry terminal is presently undergoing upgrading, but I'd like to take you over to have a look at it before the makeover is done. We are literally walking down memory lane now. It is on this passageway that passengers arriving from Butterworth step onto Georgetown Sound for the first time. It's from here that they would hunt for taxis, buses, even tri shops. Now that the terminal is closed, so are most of the shops. The few shops that continue to operate, and we saw them a moment ago, seem frozen in time. I suppose they still receive some business, as the bus terminal is still in operation. But it's nothing like way back when the ferry was continuously disgorging hosts of travellers. We just have to wait for the upgrading works to be completed, and the terminal reopens to travellers. So this is as far as I can go, for now. Consider this the before video. I look forward to the near future when the upgrading of the terminal is completed and I will come back to do the after video. This was the ticket counter for the trains. Now it's shuttered up. Okay, now let's head back to go to the bus terminal next. The Welki bus terminal has two terminal buildings. This is Terminal B. At the present moment, you can buy from the information kiosk the Pass Mutiara which allows you unlimited rides on all the Rapid Penang buses. The Pass is exclusive for locals and is a good way to use public transport at a low cost. Over on this side, we have the public toilets.
It's worth mentioning here that the whole area was built on reclaimed land. The bus terminal and the ferry terminal are otherwise part of the sea. All these buildings are likewise constructed on reclaimed land. Now let me take you to visit the clan jetties, but we will cover that in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed the tour so far. Do give it a like so that YouTube will share it to more people. And subscribe to my channel to be notified of my next video. If you have anything to share or to ask, do put it in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Until we meet again, thanks for watching.